This is the New Paltz Youth Center in New Paltz, New York, and all the sounds you're going to hear in the background are kids screaming because they have a lot of foot traffic at the New Paltz Youth Center. I worked here for, because we're both so good with time. It's from 1995. There's no way you can pull this it's off. It's September of 95. There's no way you it can is. pull that off. You walked in That's the door, I was, I was putting down the uh -huh. tiles in that room, you walked in the door and you said, hello, my name is Mark Belomo. Oh, Are you this. hiring right now? Is this something where... What do you do here? We had that conversation, and and I said, I don't know. I just opened up the place. You want to work here? And it kind of went like that. And you worked here from '95 until, yeah, I have no idea. It was like 2000 something, one or two. It's kind of like we kind of consider it a, a counseling center disguised as a rec center. You know, you get to know the kids on a first name basis, and when stuff comes up in their lives, which when you're a teenager is quite often, they feel comfortable talking to us about what's going on. Um, so, and then we can help them kind of get through whatever issues they have. Either we help them ourselves or we, you know, kind of re resource them out or yeah, refer them to different agencies that can help them. Um, you know, but for the, at a most fundamental level, it's a place where kids can go um, when they got nothing else to do. You know, it's a supervised hangout. You know, um, so certain kids kind of uh, relate better to certain staff members, you know. Mm, I wonder where you're going with this. And Mark kind of had his own little... Well, let's little describe what you do. Let's describe... Jim was... Jim, you kind of hang out with everyone, but when Jim hires workers, you know, we had, we, we'll hire a worker who's, who's good with, you know, athletics and basketball and football, and then you, right. you have to hire people who are good with, um, with games and computers, and so what was my job? And people who relate, you know, some, some, you know, anybody who relates well with people is really the type of person that we would hire in general, you know. Um, Mark was really good, not just relating to everybody, Mark got along with everybody who came here, certainly. Um, but there was a certain type of kid that kind of globbed on to Mark due to his extensive background or knowledge of things in the way of, of plastic um, yeah. uh, dolls, we'll call them. I think we'll have to call them dolls. Um, so, um, you know, so when the kids, when, when, I guess really, well, Dungeons and Dragons was big way back when. And then kind of became popular again, and so did, so did Magic. Um, really, was that, that was really the time, I think. It was really magic, right? They kind of got it going, and some kids were interested in it. And Mark, you know, had a background in it pretty much, and you know, and has a huge collection of, of everything under the sun um, that most of us would deem kind of silly, but he, you know, he appreciates. Uh, you know, but anyway, so the kids that were involved in magic, you know, they kind of made a connection with Mark, and Mark, as a natural leader, um, you know, would set up tournaments with them, would set up, you know, would kind of he built his relationships through several kids through that. And these were kids that had a lot of issues. These are kids that had, you know, difficult backgrounds, you know, had families that were disastrous. Uh, yeah, not always there for them. So they really made a connection through the center and because of their interest really made a connection through Mark. You know, and, and kids just in general want to be a part of something. They always want to feel they always want to be seen, they want to be heard, they want to feel like they're um, they're they're a part of something. I mean that's why that's why kids get involved in gangs. The know? problem that I see with youth today is parents whether one parent or two parents are working two or three jobs to get kids everything that they want mm -hmm. instead of giving them what they actually need which is face time read a book to them don't buy them a Wii read a book to them or or play with them or have time and that's I think what we provide is we provide or we provide it or you provide we provide face time and interaction with adults and trying to teach things that right. are useful in the real world. Um, but programs like this, I think, become more and more important as, you go, as the years have gone on because society has changed where you do have more single-parent homes, you have more, if they are together, they're both working because of the economy is in such a bad state that it is in, and, um, and you do have a lot more, the divorce rate is a lot higher, so, you know, kids are a lot more latchkey kids, a lot of kids who, you know, don't have anywhere to go after school anymore, yeah. parents aren't watching them. A lot of these kids, after they, we used to, we've always had the, the idea, the reason why we set the hours that we did from the get-go was that we closed at 7 because in the school year, that's when it kind of got dark. Um, and but the notion that kids are going to go home afterwards because yep. that's what yep. kids typically did. They leave here and they go home. So you, you, school's got them during the day. We got them after school, and the parents get them at night. That has changed. Kids leave here now and they go downtown. They walk around. They go. You know, rarely do parents come and pick up their kids. Um, you know, but that's a whole other subject. But you know, well, and I, mean, I was just, uh, I was one of those those kind of nerdy, disenfranchised youth. I know that's really hard to believe. Yeah, I don't see uh, that progression. But uh, 
I was one of those disenfranchised kids, and I, you know, part of me, you know, my mom and dad are always there for me, um, and were always there for me, but they didn't share similar interests. They didn't know who Snake Eyes was. They didn't know what a Stormtrooper was. But Shocking that that wouldn't happen. I know. And kids, in turn, appreciate the fact that you have an adult, you know, who's, you know, not ridiculously older than them, that you can talk to on a first-name basis. Um, they share an interest with. Well, and you know what it is. You know, treat you you're playing magic, and you're playing you're playing basketball, or you're playing softball, or you're playing double dutch with them, or you're playing a video game with them, or a board game, or you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. And in the middle of those conversations is when you can, you know, you're playing basketball, and you're like, hey, you screwing up in school? Yeah. What's going on? And that gives you the open for for trust. Right, like know? right now, you got three kids upstairs in a computer lab playing World of Warcraft. Yeah. You know, like they're playing it right now. If they weren't playing that a month ago, they were playing RuneScape. You know, and these are all interesting things. It keeps them active. It keeps them entertained, but it also keeps them separate from everybody else. You know, my issue with computers and with video games and all this crap that's out now, and even with Wayfinder stuff, is that it does kind of segregate you a little bit from the rest of the community. And that's like again, you know, one of the things that I think you know we bring to this place has always been, you know, you, you incorporate a sense of community into what's going Thanksgiving on. Thanksgiving dinner, you know, everyone gets right. together. And you know your down. neighbors, you know your people, you know what's going on in the area. You know, I mean, there was there was always more of an element of that here in the past than there is now. So I always worry that it's kind of going in a direction of uh, you know isolation. You know, some of these kids they come in here at two o'clock, they just woke up. Because they're up all night, you know, uh, reading. No, they were up all night uh, playing RuneScape for like twelve hours in a Text row. Text messaging, or playing, you know, or playing something on Xbox Live uh, on right. Call of Duty Three right, right, with somebody right. from China for like you right. know, fourteen hours. And you know, that's, I mean, everybody has their own form of entertainment through the years. But sometimes you get, um, you know, it's that isolation thing that frightens me, and that's why some people are like, "This is important," but. Um, that's that whole element, I think, kind of. Well, Jim, me. Jim's going to back me up on this. Jim and I, and I have been friends for a long time, and we've talked about stuff like this. When, when, when we were growing up, and you were watching television, and you saw the little CBS swirl come on that said CBS like special, and you knew, and you knew that Rudolph was going to come on. How many kids in the United States were watching that? Every kid. When Wonderful World of Disney was on Sunday nights, every kid watched that. It was younger. When the movie of the week was on, every kid watched it. But now, you know, I have direct TV. How many stations do I get? A thousand? Right. You know, Leave it to Beaver in Spanish? You know, we. I don't talk toys with Jim. I don't talk collectibles with Jim. I never do that. Well, we could have, but I'd be walking But, the you know, Jim's a Yankee fan. I'm a Red Sox fan. Jim and there were about 12 people at my house when the Patriots lost the Super Bowl. Jim's a Jets fan, and was screaming in my face. My friend Adam and his father were there. I cooked food for two days. We know each other on a friendship level, but I don't think I've ever asked Jim, I mean, what do you think about this toy and comic book stuff that I do? I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot, but it's weird, right? Uh, no, I don't think it's that weird. Uh, excessive? Well, everybody's, excessive. Got, everybody's got their own thing. I mean, I'm, I'm always, I always respect people who are able to... I, I mean, I, I always talk about how people take pride in what they do, and I always think that's an important element in anything you do in your life, whether you're, you know, the president or a janitor. You know, one thing you used to always point out is that, you know, um, you know, you collect this stuff, but you wouldn't walk into a store and take the, you know, if uh, you know a Star Wars figure just came out, you wouldn't go and buy all of them just because you're a collector, because then you're not leaving it for the fan or the, the kid, kid the who kid can only the buy one and just wants to go home and Absolutely. play with it. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't. Don't take content. toys from kids. <laughs> it wasn't you like you're scalping tickets. You know what right. I mean? Like you're right. a collector. Um, who does it for the sake of collecting, you know. Uh, my wife always says, you know, why are you going to buy that DVD? You've seen it already. I'm like, well, the point is it's a collection. It's something that right. you have um, in your possession. There's certain things that you'll probably never sell um, right. because it's part of your collection, even if somebody offers you a ton of money for it. I think that a lot of people get into collecting because, you know, it's an act of role play. It's an act of playing out what's in your mind because you internalize a lot of stuff. It's like, the problem is... Um, Action figure sales are down because of video games and DVDs and, and computers. You know, why would you why would you want to go out and pay ten dollars for an action figure, seven ninety nine for a Star Wars figure, seven ninety nine for a Star Wars figure when you can YouTube any video, anything that you want for free, when you can play games online for free. Um, but even in the in the act of playing with action figures, there's manipulation and role play there. I don't think that exists on a computer or in front of a video game. I and mean, we've talked about this yeah. a lot is every Saturday or almost every Saturday when, you know, the the J V football team was here, we'd go out and play football with them because, well, it's outside and it's good. And that's something that Jim's always tried to do, is say, Go outside. 